All right. Back to business. Okay. So, I, of course, was only marking to see as I walked around that you made the attempt. Now is when you check and make sure you did it right or not. So, let us begin with the first one. Height versus time. I need a graph. Where does time go? On the x-axis. Where does height go? On the y-axis. Since I did not give you any amounts of time or any amounts of height, I don't really need numbers, right? It's a sketch graph, all right? When I first get on the swing at zero time, what is the height of the swing? However high it is off the ground. So I can't put it at zero, can I? Because the swing is not on the ground. If the swing was on the ground, it wouldn't swing very well, would it? Right? Kind of hard to get pumping when you're sitting on the ground. So you would need to go start there. A little bit off the ground. Two have done this perfectly. When... How do you start on a swing? Most of us sit on the swing and stand up backwards, yes? So the swing moves up however much I stand up, agreed? So the height's gonna go up a little bit. And then I'm gonna lift up my feet. And what's gonna happen to the swing? The height's gonna go down, how low? Back down to my original height, correct? Can it go any lower? No, because chains don't stretch. Then, if I'm doing it right, what's my next height? A little bit higher because I've pumped a little bit, yeah? And then I'm going to go back down to zero, yes? What should happen in, what, what should happen in, what should be happening to these uh, peaks? Should they be spreading out this way? Is it taking longer to get from end to end? Yeah. Yes, and it's getting higher, yes? So these should be going higher each time, never going below this point. That's what it needs to look like, something like that. If you have straight lines, that's cool. Okay, because you guys, we haven't talked about parabolic motion, you won't actually know that. So if you have straight lines, that's fine. What am I looking to avoid? I'm sure there's somebody out there that drew this like this. Because that's the way a swing goes. Which is, of course, impossible. Why? Time doesn't go backwards. So if any of you drew zigzags, don't draw it that way. If any of you had the height going right down to the ground, don't draw it that way. If any of you didn't have your height increasing, make sure you understand that your height needs to be increasing. All right? Everybody cool? Everybody understands why the graph needs to look like this? Yeah. Going once. Going twice. Going thrice. Excellent. Now, what is the key word in number six's instructions? There's one very important word in there because it's going to change the way you draw your graph. Distance. Total distance traveled. So, what goes where? What goes here? Time. What goes here? Distance. How far did you go? 400 meters. So, at zero time, had you made any traveling? No. And over a certain amount of time, how far did you run? 400 meters. If you ran it at the exact same speed the whole way, it's a nice straight line, right? As long as you're going from zero up to 400, you've done it right. Now, in reality, if you were running a race, what would really happen? How would you start? You, most people start pretty slow, right? So you start nice and slow, so you're covering not a lot of distance in a lot of time, yeah? And then right around the middle, you might notice, holy crap, I'm, I'm in fifth. So what might you do? You might speed up a little. So you're covering a lot more distance in less time. And then at the end, what do you go for? 
the big finishing sprint, right? So little time, lots of distance. Everybody understand? But essentially, all you had to do is make sure you went zero to 400 in a certain amount of time. I didn't give you a time, so you couldn't put numbers on there. But if you chose to do a little bit of research, you would find out that it takes, what would be about a minute and a half to do a 400 meter run, okay? World record pace is something like 50. Is it 49 seconds, the world record pace? You did the research? <laughs> Changing you to a double tick, Prab. Yeah, and if you don't think I did it, I did, but I, I just, you just, you just wait one second. You just, you just, just you just wait. Huh? Double tick. That's for you, buddy. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Huh? Why? There's no other double ticks. I'm not a liar. No, because then you would see everybody's names. And that's not cool. Nice job, Prab. All right, now, what is different about number seven? Displacement, which means I care about direction, don't I? So this one, you had to care about the, how far away you were from where you started. Now, what shape is a trap? It's a circle? It's an oval, isn't it? There's long sides that are or 100 meters each. And then the curves are 100 meters each, yeah? Right? Yeah. Okay. So depending on where you start, your graph's going to look a little different. But as long as you recognize it's not a straight line and it ends up back at zero, I'm happy. Okay? Here's what I mean. We still got time there. We still got displacement here. So if I start, let's say I start right there. If I start right there, as I go around this first curve, am I very far from home? No. So, actually, I would do it. Oh, son of a... Why are you guys laughing at me so much? It's hurtful. I don't laugh at you. Um, so as I go around there, I'm not very far away, am I? Right? So... My displacement doesn't go very far up, yes? But time keeps going, you with me? Then once I hit here, I'm going straight away. So what happens? How far away am I getting from my starting point? Really far in same amount of time, right? Because if I consider that to be 50 meters, right? That took me that long to go 50 meters. So in double that, I'm going the whole hundred, right? So I'm going way up, right? Now what happens here? I'm still getting further away, but I've turned back a little, haven't I? Right? So I gotta go back to that slanty thing, yeah? Because I'm not going as far away in the same amount of time. Is everybody with me? Now once I hit here, what am I doing? Once I hit this point right here, what am I doing? I'm going back. So what happens to my line? It reverses. Exactly, doesn't it? So little slant. Then I hit the straight part, and I get real close, real fast, and then I come back at that angle. What am I looking for in this sketch graph? That you at least recognized you ended up back at home. Okay, I don't care too much about the middle because some people, one of the kids in my other class said the track looked like this. It was like three or 200, sorry, like 180 on each side and 20 meters around the corner. He made the track really skinny. So his graph looked different, 
right? Another kid put it on a perfect circle track, right? So his graph looked different. It doesn't matter. The point is that you recognize it's displacement, so I'm coming home, right? And it had to peak at what number? No, it's displacement. It had to peak at 200. Because at 200, you were halfway around the track, which would be as far away as you could possibly be. Does everybody understand? And then this last one was different for everybody. Um, for me, personally, I'll draw mine. Position. Ugh. What's position? Displacement or distance, do you think? Position is distance? Close your eyes. Open your eyes. Am I in the same position? Did I move? Yeah. No, I just wiggled the chair around to fool you. So is position displacement or distance? Displacement. displacement. Everybody with me? Okay, so as I leave my house, I live in the middle of Chilliwack. Can I drive very fast? In the middle of the town, can I drive very fast? Yes. Well, the way you guys might drive, yes, I suppose I could. But in reality, I drive very close to the speed limit, which is approximately 60 kilometers an hour. So that takes me 10 minutes till I can get to the highway. Okay? If I go perfectly, there is two stop signs. So technically, on this graph, should have how many flat spots? Two, two for the stop signs, yes? So I'm going to go a little bit of distance in 10 minutes. Everybody cool with that? I go about eight kilometers in 10 minutes. So let's make it easy. Say I'm 10 kilometers from the highway, right? So I go about 60 kilometers an hour, which is a kilometer a minute, yes? So it's going to be a pretty close to a straight line up to there with a couple of flats, right? For my stop signs. Everybody cool with that? Now what happens when I hit the highway? I go up to 120 kilometers an hour, right? Which is two kilometers every minute, right? And I go 30 kilometers on the highway. So it takes me 15 minutes to get to work, yeah? So if 10 minutes, if I go 30 kilometers on the highway, that takes me up to 40K, yeah? And it's going to take me 15 minutes. Well, if that's 10, that's 30. Here's 15, right? Now, if all goes well on the highway, is it a straight shot? Do I maintain constant speed? Yeah, yeah I start out slow and then I speed up. Everybody cool with that? What happens when I get off the highway? I slow down, right? Am I still getting further from home? So does the line go up still? Yeah, but I slow back down to something that looks like this for the last 2K. You with me? So I may have a stop there and there. That would be me. If you walk to school, it's going to be different, isn't it? You're not going to go 10 kilometers in 10 minutes, are you, if you're walking? unless you're walking 60 kilometers an hour, which is as fast as uh, Olympic sprinters sprint the 100 meters. If you're moving that fast, you're in the wrong line of work. Okay, everybody with me? So if you're walking, what's this line gonna look like? Are you gonna cover a lot of distance in a little bit of time, or a lot of time to cover a little bit of distance? A lot of time to cover a little bit of distance. If you're walking, it's a very shallow line, which would be drawing if I had a computer that wasn't a piece of garbage. Oh, there it is. Everybody with me? If you're on the bus, somebody in the other class gets on the bus, so it would look pretty much like this, right? With stops and starts. And then she had a long pause because she sits at Fraser for kids to get on the bus. So she had a long flat spot, and then she went back to Squiggly's to school. Everybody picking up what I'm putting down? If you drive with your parents, it would mostly be squigglies, right? Stop lights, stop signs, things like that. Everybody cool? So that's what your graph would look like. Now, you will see the next page is a textbook page, but it's very, very short. It's only three questions. So I didn't assign it to you yesterday. I'm gonna tack that on to today, okay? 
And we move on to page 155, if you would be so kind. Do you want a spoon, dude? Okay. All right. Um, so let's uh, go ahead with this. Here I have a situation, yes? If I wish for you to graph it, which I do, we are going to go ahead and hit this up. What goes where? What are the two things that I am counting on this graph? I am counting cost, and I am counting days. Which one is independent? Days. Why? Days pass for everybody, whether I'm renting a car or not. Right? Am I renting a car right now? No, I am not. Is the time passing? Yes. So... Am I paying any money to rent a car? No. So the cost depends on the days. I'm not renting a car, so I have no cost. But the days are still passing. So what goes on this axis? Cost or days? Cost. Excellent. And what goes down here? Time, which we are measuring in what? Days. How are we measuring the cost? In pesos, in euros, in dollars. Is everybody cool with the setup? Excellent. What should our scale on the bottom be? Seven. Cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you'll notice I didn't get out a ruler. I just did. I sketched it. Yeah? Everybody good? Yeah? yeah. Okay. Um, on the cost side, let's go up, let's go up by 25. 50, 75, 100. That might not even be enough. No, it's not going to be enough. Let's go up by 50s. 50. Okay, so... $65 a day for the first three days, right? Everybody agree? So if I rent the car for one day, how much do I pay? $65. So 65 would be right between 50 and 100, yeah? Right? Now, if I don't rent a car... If I walk into the store and I don't rent a car, do I owe them any money? No. So do I have an open or a closed dot at the beginning here? Open. Because I'm not going to pay $65 at zero time unless I rent the car, right? What if I rent the car? Then I start paying my 65 bucks, yes? And that 65 bucks rents me a car for how long? One day. So no matter how much time I keep it, I'm paying 65 bucks, yes? So at the end of one day, I have a dot. Is it open or closed? Closed, because up to one day is 65 bucks. Does everyone agree? And that should be straight. I just got shaky old man hands. You wouldn't want me cutting out your appendix. True story. But guys, if something crazy happened, I got YouTube. I'd save you. I'd cut out your appendix. It would be okay. Promise. Oh, yeah. There is everything on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube. Not knowing how to do something in the 21st century is the exact same as knowing it. Because the difference is how quickly you can type into YouTube. Emergency appendectomy. Wait, what's an appendix? An appendix is a little bit of tissue that hangs off the end of your large intestine. Nobody's sure, well, until very recently, it was thought to be a vestigial organ, meaning it used to do something for us. It doesn't do something for us anymore, but we haven't evolved enough to completely get rid of it. Kind of like tonsils. 
But lately, there has been some research suggesting that maybe the appendix does do something. We're just not sure what it is. Same as tonsils. All right, so everybody's cool with our first line? Yeah? Okay, what happens if I have to keep the car a second day? I had to pay 65 more dollars, right? Yeah. Which is 130, yeah? So I go up to 130. Now, open or close dot at the beginning? Open. Because the 130 doesn't kick in until the second day starts, yes? So I go out to two. And what kind of dot there? Closed. What happens on the third day? I go up again to 195, yeah? So I'm just going to write this in. This was 65. This was 130. Our next one was 195, yeah? Open or close dot? Open, out to three, closed. And this was 195. What happens then? If I need to keep it for a fourth day? I go up 30, which takes me up to 225, yeah? Two twenty-five, and then up to two fifty-five, and then that covers my fifth day. My sixth day takes me up to two eighty-five, and my seventh day takes me up to three fifteen. Does everyone agree with the graph? Everyone happy with it? Okay. Now, let's answer some questions. Should I connect these points? Would I connect those? Yes or no? So I'm going to ask, first of all, I'm going to ask, should I connect the blue lines? Should they be on the graph? A lot of people are saying no. Why? Because that's an open dot. There's no input there, is there? The input there ends at 1, right? There is no output from 65 to 130. There is no way that I would pay any amount between 65 and 130, is there? So the blue lines, no. Why? There's no cost, which is my output, in those spots, is there? Everybody cool? Everybody cool? Okay. Now, what about this? Green lines. I haven't put them on the graph yet. Should I draw in the green line? Yes or no? Kel Kelvin. Carlin says yes. Do I have any... But he to second the motion or disagree with the motion whilst I have a sip of coffee. One person is shaking their head. I won't say who that person is because they didn't say it out loud, so I don't think they want it broadcast. But one person is shaking their head. I have one disagreer. Do I have any supporting? What? We have another no? And Prab, you're a yes? All right, we got two yeses and two noes. So if it's a yes, that means that if I go up to one and a half days of an input and I go up to here, then I would be paying about $100. Is that true? The charge is per day, isn't it? So at the input of one and a half, is there an output? No, because the, out, the input of one and a half gets me the output of 130. Does everybody with me? Everybody understand. So the green lines are also no. Because again, there's no output associated with fractions. Is everybody with me? Everybody cool? Okay. Next question, is it a function, yes or no? Do we have a graph? So can we use the vertical line test? Well, let's check. 
There's my vertical line. Am I okay? Am I okay? Why am I okay there? Because it's hitting an open dot, which means it doesn't really exist. Am I okay? Am I okay? Am I okay? Same thing, open dot. So, is it a function? Yes. Why is it a function? Only one output for any input. No matter what amount of time I pick here, and I'm going to erase the green line and the blue lines now, I'm erasing some of the black ones, but that's okay. No matter what input I choose at any time on this graph, I erased that black line, I get only one output, yes? If I rent this car for five and a half days, how much am I paying? 285 bucks, right? If I rent it for three quarters of a day, 0.75 a day, how much am I paying? 65 bucks. Everybody cool? All right. Nice. Now, domain and range is a little tricky here. Domain is blue, as always. Range I draw in red. What is my domain? Pardon? Yep, the independent variable, which is on which axis? X, great. So here's the X axis. What are the values I can have for my domain? You've got the graph. Shouldn't be that complicated. What's the lowest X value? Zero. Do I hit zero? No, because there's no output at zero. If I don't rent a car, I don't pay. So zero is my lowest one. Then what symbol does it get? Less than. Less than. Can't be equal to. And then what goes here? I would put time. Less than or equal to what? Seven. Can I write that in another way? How? Interval notation, which would be what? Curvy bracket, zero, comma, seven, square bracket. Because all of this counts. Yes? All right. What about range? Range is trickier. What's the lowest range value I can have? 65. Does it go up in an interval like this? Do I color this in? No, why? I can't pay 100 bucks. I'm paying 65 or 130, yes? So what is my range? 65, 130, and all the numbers we wrote there, yes? 195, uh, 225, 255, 285 and 315. And to do this properly, I should have the squiggly brackets. Is everybody cool? Everybody cool? Okay. So now we got we come to today's topic: discrete data and continuous data. You guys are smart kids. You know what one of those words means. Continuous, discrete. Which one do you know what it means? Continuous. What does continuous mean? Keeps going all the time, right? So what do you think continuous data is? Data that doesn't stop, right? Right now, time is going by for us right now, yes? Okay. Is light hitting us? Is it continuous? 
no matter what measurement of time we take, because time would be our input, would light still be hitting us? So is that continuous? Excellent. What would discrete data be? Do you think? Secret? It stops. Okay. Everybody with me? So we'll talk about the math words for it in a minute. So one is continuous and one stops. What do I have here? It's discrete. Why? Because I have a maximum of seven days. And do I have a continual output? What are my outputs? They're set numbers. Does everybody understand? Okay. So discrete data means forgot the S. <sighs> Having trouble today. Which doesn't provide an input and an output for all possible values. Everybody understand? So in this car rental one, right, there's not an input and an output for all possible values. Or is there? Is there an output for every input? There technically is, isn't it? So even though it's a broken line and you thought it was discrete because it went up by chunks, that's because you're looking at them separately, yes? Put them together. If I give you any number of input from zero to seven, do you know how much you are paying for the car? So is it continuous? Yes. Everybody with me? Even though it doesn't look like it. So discrete is that. Continuous data is data which does provide an input and output for all values. Everybody cool? So before we go even go any further, I just want to double check what my examples are so I don't, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Let me give you an example here before we actually go on and write about it. We'll just think about it before I make you write. When I buy a six pack of cans of Coke, everybody with me? Okay. And I drink all the Coke, glug, 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 like a good North American person should. Drink six cans in one day. And I take those cans back to the recycle place, like I'm supposed to, like the commercial guy says, the little drink box with the bushy eyebrows. How much am I paid? Five cents per can, right? Right? So I take back six cans, I get 30 cents. Is that discrete or continuous data? Can I take back, continuous data is all values. Can I take back half a can? Is half a can a value? So is it continuous? No, it's discrete. Does everybody understand? I'll give you another example. Um, all of you are students in this class, yes? Right? Okay. Is the data any data that you guys bring to this room, your heights, for example, is it discrete or continuous? Discrete. 
because can I have an input of half a kid? No. 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 Right? I can't. Do you all understand what I am saying? Yeah. Everybody cool? All right. So let's actually see if you are picking up what I'm putting down. First one here. I have two things that I am counting. What are the two things that change in number one? I have two variables there. Two things are changing. What are they? Like in, number one? in number one. Right here. Oh. Number one. What are the two things that are changing? Sound. The speed of sound. Speed of sound. And temperature. Everyone agree? All right. Which of those is the IV and which is the DV? I've given you lots of ways to think about it. Jordan, what do you think? IV or DV? Which is the independent variable? Which is the dependent variable? So Jordan says the dependent variable is the speed of sound and the independent variable is the temperature. Why? Is there a temperature in the room right now? Are any of you measuring the speed of sound? So what's independent? Air temperature. There's always an air temperature. Is there always sound? No. There is not always sound. If we were in space, there would be no sound. Would there still be a temperature? Yeah. Yes. Very, cold. very, very, very cold, but no sound at all, which is why space battles are always so bothersome on television, because there is no sound of choo choo and if you're out in space, because there is no sound at all. There is also no fire, which makes explosions seem a little bothersome. What? Can they? If you have air. Yes, you can have a solid oxidizer because that is filled with oxygen. So how long will it last? Yeah. Will it make any sound? No. All right. So we have covered IV and DV. Now, that's only part A. What is part B? Is it discrete or continuous? Now we know now that our temperature is our IV, which means our temperature is an input, yes? Okay, so if it's continuous, that means for every single possible input, there's an output. Is there always a temperature? Yes. yes. So the temperature is continuous, yes? yes. Always. Because we don't know how hot it could get. We do know how cold it can get, right? Yeah. In our, our experience, negative 273 degrees is as cold as we can measure. We call it absolute zero, but we don't know. Okay, so is the temperature continuous? Is there always temperature? Yes. At every single temperature, can the sound move? We don't know, but the guess is what? Yes, because for every temperature, I know there's a sound. So this has to be continuous. Now the argument is, Whoa, 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 Mr. Myers. We only measure temperature in degrees. So how can there be an input? Well, every number can be split into chunks, can't it? Yep. Right? We could divide a degree into billions, and it would still be a temperature, wouldn't it? Because it's not something that we're dividing, like the pop can question. Everybody good? Okay. So let's go to the next one.
Part A. What are the two things that are being counted? The age and the dosage of vitamin C, yes? Which is the IV, which is the DV? Emma. Age is IV and dosage is DV. Why? I'm sorry? You're going to keep aging, and however old you get is how much vitamins you need. Yes? Excellent. Good job. Now, is it discrete or continuous? It's tricky. Carlin says discrete. Why? <laughs> what if she dies? Okay. Uh, I'm going to... Yep. I'll look for something a little more positive than that. But indeed, yes, the person could die. But the day before the person died, did they not need vitamin C? Yeah, they did. Okay. Yeah. So, not death. Okay. Is, there, <laughs> is, is there an output for every single input? No, there isn't. Why? Yes, if you're 15 years old in 14 days, you don't get out a vitamin C tablet and cut off 14 365ths of it, do you? Right? You can't. If you guys read a medicine bottle, 6 to 12, take one tablet. Over 12, take two tablets, right? Is there a difference between 13 and 93? Yes. But the output doesn't change, does it? Right? So this is discrete. Because there isn't an output for every single possible input. Because we don't input all the stuff in the middle. Picking up what I'm putting down? All right. Number of cans purchased is related to the cost. So what are the two things I'm counting? Cans and cost. Which one is IV? Which one is DV? Pardon? Cans is independent. And cost is dependent. Why? Because cost depends on how many cans I buy. If I walk into Safeway and buy no cans of juice... Do I pay for any cans of juice? Yeah. No. If I walk into Safeway and buy a sandwich, do I pay for any cans of juice? No. no. I pay for the sandwich. What if, you get what if you get thirsty and you're like, oh, I really want a can of juice? Then I would go buy the can of juice, and the cost would depend on the fact that I was thirsty and bought a can of juice. I am not a thief. <laughs> Now, <laughs> is it continuous or discrete? Why? I can't buy half a can of juice. I cannot go to Safeway. I'm just half thirsty. Glug, 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 glug. I would like 40 cents back, please. But you do not pay for half the juice. You buy the can. If you choose to pour one out for your homies, that's your business. Okay? Everybody understand? That one's discreet. Oh, I forgot to do the reasons. You can't input half a can of juice. You just can't. Right? There's no output for half a can of juice. And finally, what is... Uh, Altitude and temperature. What are the two uh, things we're counting? Altitude. Temp. What's the DV? What's the IV? This one's tricky. You actually have to know something about the world. Altitude is IV or altitude is DV? Altitude is IV, temperature is DV. Why? 
higher you get, the colder it is. That's why there's ice on the top of Mount Baker all year round. So, discrete or continuous? Why is it continuous? At every single altitude, there's a temperature. Even if it's an altitude we don't measure, right? If I went up by one sextillionth of a meter, which doesn't have a measurement, it's not a centimeter, a millimeter, a picometer, one a sextillionth of a meter, which is like 24 zeros, is there still a temperature there? Yes. Right? The temperature... Altitude doesn't disappear. We do not teleport between altitudes, do we? Everybody cool? Everybody good? All right. Okay, so all you have to do, and you have half an hour with which to do it, and according to some of you, that's not enough time to get your homework done, so I hope that most of you are going to apply this effectively. You are going to do page 154 right now. Right meow. And since I'm giving you half an hour to do it, should you have any homework? It does. Now, guys, listen please. Listen, please. Notice how many lessons in this unit? Five, right? We've just finished 5.2. What would be a good thing to do as a teacher right now? Quiz. I'm not a teacher. Right now. I am a teacher. No, not right now. After we've gone over page 154. Oh, okay. So expect a quiz at any time after this class. It's like a horror movie. You open your door and it's sitting there like a cobra in your room. What block is this? Page 154, and you could have a quiz on functions. Could be Thursday, could be Friday. Because both Thursday and Friday are after today. Now, um, I'm still recording because I want proof that I have said this for a second time. Today is Woden's Day, Wednesday. Thursday at 3 o'clock. No, I lie. Thursday at 2.28 is the last deadline for the five or six people that have not written their cumulative exam. If they wish to write it and they wish to improve their grade, they must write it by the end of school tomorrow. I lie. I can do one thing better for you. I can give you study hall time after school tomorrow. So you would write it in study hall tomorrow, which is in Miss Molinelli's room downstairs, and she will put it in my mailbox for you. If she does that and it is awaiting me Friday morning, then that would still count. If you do not wish to write it, you are happy with the grades you have, don't write it. But I would like to go over it for everybody else. Okay? Everybody understand? Those six people, I don't know entirely who they are. I just counted it today. Everybody else, the cumulative has been marked. If you got changes in your grades, they are on check my mark. If there's a little asterisk beside the number for unit three or unit four, that means you did better and I changed it. If the number hasn't, no asterisk, you did worse or exactly the same. Okay? Okay.